We're going to get started. If you will, take a church hymnal, open up to number 120, number 120 in the church hymnal, number 120. Let's all stand as we sing Victory in Jesus, number 120, Victory in Jesus, the church hymnal. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning Of his precious blood's atoning then I repented of my sin and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love <coughs> to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing. How we made the lame to walk again And caused the blind to see And then I cried, dear Jesus Come and heal my broken spirit And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. About the angels singing And the old redemption story And some sweet day I'll sing up there The song of victory Oh, victory in Jesus My Savior forever he sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Brother Austin, would you lead us in prayer, please? No.
Amen. Amen. We'll have a few announcements. October the 30th will be Trunk or Treat. Anyone who would like to participate, please see Tim Riddle. It'll be 4 to 8 o'clock. October the 31st is Youth Sunday. And then on November the 6th, Saturday at 8, will be the Men's Prayer Breakfast. November the 7th, Sunday is the time change. November the 7th, Sunday is Ladies' Prayer Time during the Sunday School Hour. And on November the 13th, Saturday at 5, is Youth Rally. Continue to pray for Justin Baggett. He's doing a lot better. We need to continue to pray for him and the family. Also pray for Betty Christopher. Uh, any other announcement we need to make at this time? All right, then. We're going to do uh, number 239. Number 239. While you're turning there, uh, this afternoon, I, me and the kids played baseball with another family. I don't typically do that, but uh, I probably won't be able to walk tomorrow. But I got to thinking about a story I heard. He was a great pitcher. Uh, his name was Oral Hershiser. Some of you may remember him. He pitched from 1983 to 2000. But he had a problem. He was real timid. And they, Tommy Lasorda, the Los Angeles Dodgers, gave him the nickname Bulldog, which was the total opposite of his character. But it helped him to be more aggressive on the, on the mound. And I thought about this scripture in uh, Romans chapter 8. It says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sakes we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. But listen to number 37. It says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Isn't that good? Yeah. We are more than conquerors. We have victory. Amen. Yes, sir. I'm persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let's sing number 239. Victory today is mine. <laughs> Amen. There's a deep settled peace abiding in my soul Since I have found a friend divine He from sin did release Now love was o'er me roll The victory today is mine Victory, victory, victory is mine I've had it in my soul Since Jesus made me whole Victory, victory, victory is mine. The victory today is mine. Once my soul was in doubt, so often I had cried, Lord, lead me to the glory line. Now with joy I can shout, for I am satisfied. The victory today is mine. Victory, victory, victory is mine. I've had it in my soul since Jesus made me whole. Victory, victory, victory is mine. The victory today is mine. So while time here shall last, I'll labor, watch, and pray. My life for him each day shall shine. For his love holds me fast, he's with night and day. The victory today is mine. Victory, victory, victory is mine. I've had it in my soul since Jesus made me whole. Victory, victory, victory is mine. The victory today is mine. Mine. At the end of the way, close by the eastern gates, my friends and loved ones I shall find. Soon will time bring the day they have not long to wait. The victory today is mine. Sing out. Victory, 
victory, victory is mine. I've had it in my soul since Jesus made me whole. Victory, victory, victory is mine. The victory today is mine. Amen. Amen. If you would, turn to number 269. Number 269. Amen. 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 <laughs> Number 269, since Jesus came into my heart. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. I have lied in my soul for which long I have sought since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll. Since came into my heart. I have ceased from my wandering and going astray since Jesus came into my heart. And my sins, which were many, are all washed away since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart, my heart. Floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart. The third one says, I'm possessed of a hope that is steadfast and sure since Jesus came into my heart. That fourth one says, there's a light in the valley of death now for me since Jesus came into my heart. We got a lot of things since Jesus came into our heart. Amen. A lot of things. Let's sing that fifth one. I shall go there to dwell in that city I know since Jesus came into my heart. And I'm happy, so happy as on when I go since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart, if you would, let's all stand and greet our neighbor tonight.
All right, it's good to see everybody here tonight. Glad everybody's here. Man, I'm happy to be in the house of the Lord. Have a seat. <laughs> All right, I need two of my ushers to come down. We'll go ahead and take up our evening offering. Brother Braden, go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us a beautiful day to come worship you. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to come yes, worship you. Lord. Come worship you. Yeah, yes. you've been good. I ask that you bless this message of the rest of the I ask that you bless this offering. And as you see fit. In his name I pray. Amen. Amen. Standing on, and all 
tears falling down I'm so glad he sees what we don't He knows the end from the beginning He looks ahead past the hurt and the pain To a place where the peace passes all understanding He sees the sun Somebody will stand with you. Who you want? Miss Stevie. I knew she would. I'm saying Psalms one. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he doth meditate day and night. He is like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. And his leaf shall not wither, and whatever and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. But the ungodly are not so, for they are as the shaft which the wind driveth away. Therefore God knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Is this thing on? <laughs> Which one do you want me to show? One away. Okay. Let me think. I remember it. It's been so long since I said it. How do you start him out? Hmm. I think Psalms it's Psalms one away. Psalms one away. Let me see it. Well, you're the one that told me you knew it. Well, I did. Oh God, my heart. Oh God, my heart is fixed. Wait, one oh eight? Psalms. It was supposed to be "Bless the Lord, O my soul." I forget. Um, oh no, I forgot it. I forgot it. One oh three. Oh yeah. <laughs> it was the Bible's fault. They put it in the wrong place. <laughs> Bless the Lord, O my soul, and for. All that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who heals, wait, forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns your 
with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Oh, no. The Lord executes righteousness to, and, and judgment to all who are oppressed. He made way, his ways known. Made, to, known his, made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. Ah, the, Lord is the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. Amen. Amen. You know what? Jesus wept. I knew we was going to get that one. I knew we was going to get that one. Why don't you look in your Bibles, Deuteronomy chapter 11. Y'all laugh, but I'm fixing to ask somebody, anybody to want to stand up and give their favorite verse or a verse that they know, whether or not it's their favorite or not. We're going to see how many people has a Bible scripture tonight. Deuteronomy chapter 11, we'll start in verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 11, start in verse 18. We had to learn in Brother Tommy's class about six months ago, if y'all remember it, Psalms chapter 1. How many of y'all can still say it? Amen. Amen. Blessed is the man. Amen, brother. That's good. Amen. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 18, Therefore shall ye lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul and bind them for a sign upon your hand that they may be as frontlets between your eyes. And you shall teach them your children. I was proud this morning when I was told that Kara could do it. You done good. Psalms 1. You done good. That tells me you got a really, really good mom and daddy that's trying to teach you the Word of God. You understand, they're not doing it just to because they want to. They're doing it because God told them to. They're being obedient to God. Most parents don't do that no more. Y'all ought to thank God. You ought to praise the Lord for the parents He has given you. Let me go back over 19. And you shall teach them to your children. And most of us, is all, our children's already grown. Young people, one day down the road, if God don't come back, God's going to let y'all have kids. God forbid. <laughs> Teach your kids the scriptures. There's going to be days they don't want to. There's going to be days that they're not going to like you for it. Do it anyway. Anyway. And ye shall teach them your children, speaking of them when thou sittest in thine house, when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Teach them every chance you can teach them. 
And thou shalt write them upon the doorpost of thine house and upon thy gates that your days may be multiplied and the days of your children in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them as the days of heaven upon the earth. For if ye shall diligently keep all these commandments which I command you to do them, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to cleave unto them. Lord, tonight we thank you for the word of God. We thank you, Lord, that it can lengthen our days. We thank you, Lord, that it can help us, Lord, that they can help us to serve you, to stay in the middle of your will, to please you. Lord, the word of God is so important. Help us, God, to hide it in our heart. Lord, I pray, oh Lord, that you would help the church tonight to realize, to really, really realize how important it is not to read the Bible, but to know the Bible. Lord, to hide the word of God in our heart, not in our mind, not in our mouth, but, Lord, did it mean something to us. Help us, God, tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Brother Aiden, give us your favorite scripture. Give us a scripture. Amen. Yeah. It's telling you you can have confidence in your salvation. All right, who else wants to give a scripture tonight? Yes. Okay. Amen. I'm proud of you, Damien. That is really, really good. Who else? Okay. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Amen. 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 <laughs> 
Amen. 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 And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, commit thou the faith of men who shall be able to teach others also through hardness of the good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that war entangleth himself in the affairs of this life, and he will please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. I like that one. Hey, Miss Betty, give us a scripture. Yeah. I will never read that verse the same way now that I that there is a river. <laughs> you just have to trust me. <laughs> I swam in it. <laughs> that was pretty good right there. I like it. What's well, a scripture? Amen. All. That's good. It's good. These verses help me all the time. And I've never forgotten them because they got my life straight on some. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy which is in you, and you are not your own? You've been bought with a price. Therefore, if you're not your own, you've been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify your. I kept it open in case I 
glorify, glorify God in your body or something. Yes. Amen. 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 That's right. Amen. You done really good, Brother Keith. That's true. And uh, I said, all right. So it's a few weeks later, it went on. Every night before I go to bed, I say, I have to read it every time. And it's so it's not any word. I said, man, I can't believe it. But one night, you know, I asked God, I said, God, uh, this is right here. I say, I said, uh, Lord, I'm going to remember that God's word first. I'm going to start doing my, I can't remember God's name. I'm going to try. Amen. Amen. Yes, Miss Sandy. Amen. Proverbs three, five, and six. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. You will. You're right. Amen. Therefore shall ye lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul and bind them for a sign upon your hand that they may, may be as frontlets between your eyes. I know some of us are slower than others. I'm the slow one. I know uh, there's some of us have problem memorizing. Boy, shouldn't we do more about what about learning God's word? I mean, would you say that you've done everything possible 
to learn a verse in your lifetime of serving God have you done everything possible to learning and putting to memory some of God's words and then falling in love with them because that's what it means to hide them in your heart shouldn't we want I'll give you an example I know it's shallow but it's still true Carol rarely wrote me letters but when she did I wore them things out especially the I love you part Amen. Amen. Let me show you another one. Talks about the same thing we're talking about tonight. We're going to get too far. Psalms 111. Psalms 11911. Anybody want to give it a shot? Thy word. That's talking to the Lord. If you learn to quote that one, you ought to say it to the Lord. And I got a question for you tonight. Can you honestly say that you've done that? Can you step back and say, Thy word, thy word, have I hidden my heart, so that I might not sin against thee? We're not hiding it in our mind. We're not hiding it in our mouth. Either one of them places, it can be stolen. It can change by the circumstance that you're in. But when it's in your heart, there ain't nothing can rob it. If the word would have been in Eve's heart when Satan showed up, she could have said, Thus saith the Lord, and walked away happy. But what she did is she started thinking. If Adam's word would have been in his heart, then he couldn't have got emotional and went after Eve. The word keeps us from sin. When Satan come after Jesus in the wilderness three times, Jesus said every single time it is written we need in the day's time to learn the Bible where should I start preacher that's a good spot that's a good spot when you're reading your Bible, because most of us do, and you're reading your Bible, when a scripture helps you learn it, learn it here. Love it here. I have a whole bunch of more scriptures. I'm not going to give it. We need to hide God's word in our heart. Deuteronomy chapter 11 just tells us to put it everywhere. Just put it everywhere. Okay, you're trying to learn just one verse. Hang it on the mirror. Put it on the refrigerator. Put it on the cereal box. Put it on the steering wheel of your car. Put it on your lunch bucket. Put it around your fingers. So it said, 
put it somewhere that you might be able to learn it. And when you get it down, don't remove it. Keep it up somewhere. Take all the rest of them down. Leave one up. And you're over there brushing your teeth. You say, "Bless it is the man that walking on the council of the ungodly. <laughs> nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of God. And in the law doth he meditate day and night. You know what our problem is? The Bible tells us. The problem is, another word for hide is to lay up. Another scripture word for hide is to lay up. And Jesus said over there in the book of Matthew, he says the problem with us is we like to lay up on earth and stood a lay up in our heart. You want me to tell you what's sad, Brother Dwayne? I could probably tell you a third of the people who play for Georgia Bulldogs. Can I name that many scriptures of the people that I know? It's what we put our time in. It's what we put our heart in. And did you know not one football player is going to get me out of hell? Not one football player is going to come to my funeral? Not one football player is going to come help me in my problem. Not one football player is going to give me a dollar or clothes on my back. But you know what that Lord will do for me? Everything. Everything. This is our lifeline in this world. Amen. This is what anchors us to Jesus Christ. This is our spiritual meat for our belly. This is my shield. This is my sword. This is how I fight Satan. This is where my Lord talks to me. And we take it for granted. Miss Stevie, Brother Chuck, I'm thankful that you teach your kids Bible. They might not like it. They might fight you and give you an attitude, stomp their foot. And they might roll their eyes. But one day down the road, what you've put in their heart and in their mind and when life and trouble comes by their way, it gives the Holy Spirit something to recall. You say, I don't have kids no more. They're all grown. They're all that. You know how you put it in their life? You live it in front of them. You now have become a walking, if you're saved, living epistle. And he didn't write it, the Bible said, on stone, but on fleshly tables of your heart. You know how people's going to learn the Bible that don't never read it now? Through your life. And so the question is tonight, how much Bible do you got hid in your heart? Amen. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. It tells you to do it while you're young. 
Learn it while you're young. I'm glad I'm still young. Do you know there's nowhere in that Bible where it tells you to quit learning? I don't care how gray-headed you are. Simple tonight, wasn't it, y'all? Effective tonight, wasn't it, y'all? Amen. This morning I was told that she could do Psalms chapter 1. And so the sermon that I had got canned. And I went back there and studied on some scriptures of hiding the word of God in your heart. All because a little girl in our church decided to learn some scripture. Or a little girl was made to learn some scripture. Either way, it don't matter. God gets the glory either way. Now, you know what I'm going to tell you, and then I'm done, and I'm going to pray. Your excuse is, I can't memorize Scripture. And I'm telling you, you can. Oh, it might not be like they can, but you can. You can. And you might miss a word here or there. You might even miss a whole line. But I promise you, you can learn some scripture if you want to. If you want to. And what that tells us is, is, is if our heart is right or not. Let's, be, let's learn some Bible. Let's witness Amen. Amen, brother. Learn the Romans road. Yeah. Romans 3.23, Romans 6.23, Romans 5.8, Romans 10.13, 10.9 and 10. Learn it. It gives you a way to be able to witness. If you don't, listen, your testimony is good enough to witness. Just your testimony. Come see a man which told me all things ever I did. Your testimony. But if you want scripture, learn the Romans road. It'll help you. To be able to witness to somebody. All right. Anything else before I close out? Yes. Anybody said yes? Ephesians 5 says your Bible washes you. You feel dirty sometimes? Get the Bible.
Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm a whosoever. Amen. I'm a whosoever. I got a shirt that just says I'm a whosoever. Don't even have no scripture on it. Miss Tabitha made it. Because I'm hoping I'm wearing it one day and somebody walks up and says, what does that mean? And I said, well, let me tell you. I said, don't put no scripture because if you do, they're going to walk away from it. Don't put no scripture. Just say I'm a whosoever. And that way if somebody asks me, I can give them an answer. So anyway. That goes back that I can do all things says Jesus Christ. Amen. You can do it. It's funny us men are the ones that say we ain't got no mind to do it. We say that all our women can. They're smarter than us. But I can say, what size nut driver do I need to tighten that bolt over with? Yeah, number seven. You get that number seven. It'll work. We can know it. We can know them kind of things. But when it comes to scripture, we're like, I can't do it. I can't do it. How do you clean out the carburetor? I can ask Brother Tim, how do you change out this on the diesel? He's like, well, you're going to need this, you're going to need this, you're going to do this, and then what you're going to do, never mind, you can't do it, I'll do it, and this is how you're going to do it. <laughs> but then you say, how many scriptures do you know? And we'll go, uh, and we'll say, I can't do it. We do what we want to do. Lord, tonight, I thank you for your grace. I thank you for the living, breathing word yes. that I get to tote my... God, you, you didn't leave me alone. And I thank you for getting a tote around freely a Bible. I live in America where I got a Bible written in my language. Lord, that you gave me the right to hide it in my heart. Help me, help me to hide more scripture in my heart. God, that I might be able to live for you and please you and, and know what to do and fight the devil and, and move on and help others and just on and on. God, I thank you. Thank you for the church tonight, your people. Lord, some of them has learned some Bible and hid it in their heart. Some of them is drawing closer to you. And Lord, and in that, it helps me. Continue helping the church to grow in knowledge and wisdom on how to use your Bible. Thank you, God, for these little kids that's already been made to learn your Bible. Keep it ever before their eyes, Lord, as they're growing up. Help us, Lord, to be a light and a help to them. We thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See y'all Wednesday.